Okay, so you have arrived on site, you're either in an urban area or in an outskirts area but with a good and stable internet connection and you've decided to rather use your local Entrip or Trignet service provider or cause network to be able to receive corrections to your rover. So in this case it's a very big advantage if you're not uncertain of how big and how far your terrain will be. Also if you have a base and a rover at hand you can configure both of them and get double the amount of work done in a much shorter time. If you only have a single receiver at hand this is definitely your most common workflow that you will follow. So currently we have an RS2 rover and we'll run through all the settings on Wi-Fi with our RS2 rover and configure it to our local and nearest Trignet or Entrip service provider. Alright so our first step is to connect our controller to our receiver. There's currently two methods available. The one method is called the BLE method, the other one is the Wi-Fi method. In this case we'll look at how to connect over the Wi-Fi method. So the first thing we need to do is we make sure that we are connected to our RS2 rover over Wi-Fi. If you are not connected to your receiver, please press the connect button. The password is MLED reach all in small letters and it's written on your receiver. So just follow the letter and the wording, type it into your connection and make sure that you are connected. Once you are connected, you'll see the correct tick on the side and that means you can now go over to your ReachView 3 app. You'll see your list of available devices and currently I can see that I am already connected to my RS2 rover. I'll click on my settings tab and I'll go to my mobile data, the first one. Okay. I'll make sure that I turn my mobile data on. Please do not double click if it does not respond fast. Give it a moment to load and it will pull through. Alright, if it's on and it says your mobile data is still off, remember it still needs some time to get some internet connection to, so, to say and show that it is actually available. There we go. We can see that currently the receiver is connected to the internet. The next thing we want to do is because we're making use of a rover, we only set anything on the correction input tab. So let's click on the correction input tab. So on your correction input tab, you have a few available options. LoRa, Entrip, Serial, TCP Server, TCP Client and Bluetooth. For this, we are going to click on Entrip. If you have not yet created your own profile, please make sure to click on the plus button and type in your profile name, your IP address, your port number, your username and password. And then you'll automatically be able to select your nearest and closest mount point. Okay, for this case, we have already set up our own Trignet Entrip um, correction service and we can just make sure that it's ticked, Entrip. So make sure that you are ticking your Entrip correction and wait for the corrections. So currently we can see that it's saying receiving corrections and it's on float and as soon as it goes over to a fixed position, we'll hear the beep sound. If it does take a while, do not be concerned because your Entrip server might not always use the same type of quality base or receiver that you're actually using. You might only work with a low end receiver on the other side so the amount of satellites and information that you're getting might only be 12 instead of 38. So just give it a moment until you see a fixed result and then work from there. To have a better result it's always preferred to use your own RS2 as a base of an Entrip caster. This will allow optimal use on an Entrip or Trignet setup. Great, so we have a fixed result. Let's go do some work. 